From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Once again, thank you for inviting us into your home. We'd love to be there in person, but it is good that we can communicate with you and show you our love and share the Word of God with you and encourage your heart in the day and ages in which we're living. And let me just say that the headlines right now, the global headlines I'm going to give you, are shocking. Some of these absolutely grip my heart, the first one being the hunt for golf's deadly plumes. I never heard that word before, the plumes in the golf. Thousands dead as flooding devastates Asia. And NASA scientists braced for solar tsunami to hit the Earth. We'll examine that very, very carefully. But first, could I just say that Jack works so very, very hard on these programs, probably about 50 hours a week, uh, just on the programs in his office. And I'm so grateful for the work ethic that the Lord has put on his heart. And I believe that that's one reason we're such a great nation, because average American really knows the meaning of working and certainly we want to get more jobs out there so that we can all be working but that certainly has helped America to become what we are Jack thank you for working so hard and I'll tell you why I do it Rexella because Jesus said work for the night is coming when no man shall be able to work and he was talking about his return and the signs of the times and ladies and gentlemen it's here today we are dealing with the 21 judgments of the book of Revelation. Recently, a minister said, ah, oh, that's just science fiction. We don't believe the book of Revelation anymore. Wait a minute. God allowed me in the last two weeks to find all 21 judgments that Christ mentions in the four Gospels as outlined in the book of Revelation. Identical. If you don't believe the book of Revelation and you want to throw it out of the Bible, then throw out the four Gospels and the preaching of Jesus too, and you have nothing left. And some of these ministers who say it are nothing but idiotic preachers. Believe me, they do not know the Word of God, and that's what Paul called ignorant brethren in 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Today, we're going to continue. There are 21 judgments, the seven seal judgments, the seven trumpet judgments, and the seven vile or bold judgments. Every time a seal is broken, a judgment falls. Every time a trumpet is blown, another judgment falls. And every time a bowl is tipped, the final seven judgments hit the earth. Now, this can become so confusing as we talk about the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls. We're not going to do it that way. We're just going to talk 21 judgments from 1 to 21, and we covered the first seven last week. I honestly believe as we deal with these 21 judgments that every one of them is already working. They all happen after we're gone, after the rapture, after the come up hither of Revelation 4.1. You are born again, won't see these things. But they're going to be fulfilled soon, but before they're fulfilled, we're evacuated. However, the main thing I want you to see today is Every one of the 21 is already in progress. Friends, as you know, we've been discussing the events of the book of Revelation and how they're so relevant right now. We started on number 8 of the 21, and uh, we're going to pick up on that one. Something just came into our office that stirred our hearts. It's a statement from Amid al-Hamad. Now, I want you to see what he had to say. He is from the island of Bahrain, and that is an island off the coast of Arabia. There are lots of Shia in our country. The Shia want to make fire all over the world. We know what Iran's intentions are. My, oh, my, fire all over the world? That's quite a statement, Jack. And I know that you'll want to elaborate on that. Number eight, please. 
Number eight is Revelation 8, 7. A third part of the trees was burned and all green grass was burned. And that could have to do with atomic warfare, which we'll see later in this lineup. But listen to me very carefully. We've just had tremendous fires in Los Angeles, in Russia, in Spain, in Portugal, and the sign has already started. And here is Ahmadinejad of Iran who says, I want to burn up the whole world. And when he says it, I think he really means it. But these are the Shia, 10% of the Muslims, but the Sunnis don't really feel that way, the 90%. But this little guy, when he gets the bomb, watch out. Well, certainly his intentions are not good. He's even said it himself. We're going now to the ninth, and you know what? It's repeated in number 16. Some of the numbers that I'm giving you right now are repeated later. Not, they're not 21 signs. There are signs, and then they're intensified with another sign later on. Nine and 16 are the same, and it has to do with the oceans. Can you believe that one? It has to do with the oceans. Take a look at this. The coast is not clear, though the BP oil spills impact is much less severe than feared. Long-term threats remain, wetlands destruction, dead zones, and climate change. They make the spill look almost minor. Woo! BP catastrophe may lurk. Oil, deep water don't mix, and how true that is. Oil and water never mix. The hunt for golf's toxic plumes. Now, Jack, would you explain that word and how it comes to pass? And here we go again. Adrift in a sea of oil. Now, friends, that just uh, didn't happen at the Gulf. It also happened off the shoreline of China. They had a terrible disaster. Take a look. Scientists find signs of dead zones in the sea, in the sea. And ocean dead zones may be worse than thought. The dead zones. China flexes its naval muscle. They don't care what's happened. They're going to build up their navy no matter what. And India's nuclear submarine plan surfaces. Certainly with what happened in our Gulf, we're well aware that oil can be very dangerous if it spills over into the oceans. Everything dies there. Oh, Jack, it is a dangerous thing. Judgment number nine, an angel casts something as huge as a mountain into the sea. And one third of the aquatic life dies. But when you get to judgment 16, there's an elaboration, a magnification of the problem. Every living creature in the sea died. Revelation 16, verse three. Now, is that all possible? Rexella talked about the plumes. That is something that is horrendously horrible to destroy oceans. Why? Because there are now 415 of these dead zone sites in all the oceans of the world, 415. And they go 15 miles long, six miles wide, and go down hundreds of feet into the ocean. And it's called a plume because it forms this gooey, sticky mess. And they're not finding it now. Why? Because they've just found one 21 miles long in the Gulf, but it's down so far that nobody has been able to reach it as yet. And this thing destroys the aquatic life, the fish, by the hundreds of millions. And God help us in the future and it won't happen in our time right now, but after we're gone, it takes place because it's the Word of God. Again, I repeat, judgments 9 and 16. But wait a minute, Rexella. There's even more. We find out that China is building submarines along with India, along with Israel, along with Iran, along with America, along with Russia. And they plan to shoot these atomic weapons under the sea. And that is going to kill the life in the oceans without any doubt. 
And that's Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7, Revelation 9, 18. But we'll be gone oh. when it happens. You know what? Uh, people say some of these things uh, really do scare me. They are very, very uh, heart-moving to keep our eye on, but it does point to something good. Jesus said, when you see this happen in the oceans, I'm coming back. Yeah. It's beginning now, Jack. Well, he's coming back to earth, but he's yes. taken us out seven years before his yeah. coming back to the earth. We're to going to return one. with him. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. We're going into number 10. Now, number 10 is number 17. Number 10 has to do with the rivers, but number 17 is the building intensity of the destruction, not only the oceans, but of the rivers. Take a look at this. Storms hammer Midwest with floods and tornadoes. Again, thousands dead as flooding devastates Asia. Now the death toll climbs also in Central Europe with the floods there. Pakistanis flee as floods burst rivers banks. And Pakistan floods kill. Well, 1,100 on this one, but it keeps going up, friends, more and more. And once again, cholera is rising in the wake of the floods. Now, 20 million are homeless, and that number is going up also. There you see a mother and her child. The Indus River there swelled so much, it drove them from their home. And U.S. Army airlifts Pakistan flood victims are trying to evacuate them as quickly as possible. Firm is investigated in river poisoning. Take a look at the thousands, maybe millions of fish that are dead after the spill from major Chinese mining company. All fish dead in the rivers right near China there. It's a terrible, terrible thing that's happened, Jack, Pakistan and worldwide. And that, of course, is Revelation chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. And it states that an angel cast a star, a meteorite, into the rivers and fountains of water, and one-third of these rivers and streams were polluted and poisoned. But when one gets to Revelation chapter 16, and that's the 17th judgment, verse 4, he finds that all of these rivers and streams become bloodied and totally dead. Because every time, the second time it's happening, it's modified. I mean, it becomes greater in intensity and immensity. And say, well, how can all that happen? Well, these poisons that you just saw in China going into the rivers. And we have what is called eutrophication. What does that mean? That means that all these fertilizers, phosphorus things, nitrogen, as being put into these rivers and streams of water as bringing tremendous poison to all of them. And this eutrophication can just kill millions of fish like you just saw what's happening in China. But there's one other thing. The fishermen have these heavy nets, much of them with iron in it. And when they get rid of them, they drop them in the ocean and they sink down and they become traps for the fish. Millions get caught in them, and they have no way of getting out to get their food supplies, and they die. So here we're being warned by the world of what's coming, and yet it's what Jesus and the Bible said would happen after we're gone. But it's the beginning. That's how near the coming of the Lord is for you and me. Oh, my friends, here we are already on the 11th one of the catastrophes in the book of Revelation, and that also is number 18. And when I say that also is number 18, it intensifies with that same sign as number 18. Now, the sign 11 in the Bible deals with the heavens, the sun, the space, and even space wars. NASA scientists braced for solar tsunami to hit the Earth. Woo! All right, here's what they had to say. The Daily Telegraph disclosed in June that senior space agency scientists believe the Earth will be hit with unprecedented levels of magnetic energy from solar flares after the sun wakes 
from a deep slumber sometime in 2012, the disaster date. That's Whoa. how I'm saying it. Yes, Not us. they are. Sun storm to hit with force of, whoa, a hundred million bombs? A hundred million bombs? It's the new space race views of Earth from up there are hot commodity down here. And Israel aims to be space superpower. Here's a concern, wars in space, and this is the intelligence briefing that Jack puts out so very, very frequently. Is the X-37B the start of war in space? And space war is becoming real. Military is on the verge of using laser weapons. Now that has to do with Star Wars becoming very, very real. Now that was the cover story taken from USA Today. Star Wars becoming real. War in space. Is it going to happen, Jack? Revelation 12, 7, there was war in the heavens and it's coming. I mean, the world is getting all of their planes ready for the great thing that's coming and the missiles that will be blasting one another out there in space. Oh, Jake, that's so serious to think about. Now remember, this is Judgment 11 and 18. They're the same, but with greater intensity. Jack, it's so serious. I'm going to start with number 18. You'll see why in a moment. It says, The angel poured out his bowl of judgment upon the sun, S-U-N, and power was given unto the sun to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with a great heat. Is that global warming? No. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26 says that the brightness and power and heat of the sun will be sevenfold, seven times as great as normally. What is accomplished in seven days of a blazing sun now all takes place in just one day, but God has mercy. And so we go back to number 11 now. The trumpet judgments. And the trumpet is blown by the angels and suddenly a third part of the sun, a third part of the moon, a third part of the stars was darkened so that one third of the world was made dark. Why? To save the lives of these people. Now this is really interesting, Rexella. Why? Jesus said in Matthew 24 verses 21 and 22, watch this, there shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be, except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those who are saved during the tribulation hour, those days shall be shortened. Now, Daniel 9, verse 27 says that the tribulation period is the 70th week, and that is a period of seven years. Now, the Jewish calendar was 360 days, so 360 times 7 is 2,520 days. When God says something's going to last 2,520 days, it can't last 2,400 days. It has to last like God said it would. God never makes a mistake. In fact, when you see what a half of the tribulation hour is, in Revelation 11, 3 and 12, 6, it's 1,260 days. That twice is 2,500 days. And 20 days. Now, how does God shorten the days? He doesn't. Dr. Logston, to him I'm grateful for this information. Memory years ago, a pastor of Moody Memorial Church, he said God shortens the daylight hours to save the people from the scorching rays of the sun. That's the only answer. You also find that in Joel 2, 31 and Acts 2, 19, and Jesus predicted the very moment what would happen in Matthew 24, 29, when he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. But in the midst of all that, verse 27, Christ gives us hope again as he says, as the lightning shineth from the east to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In the midst of all his darkness is a luminous light from one end of the heavens to the others, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to set up his kingdom on earth. But remember, we were gone seven years before. We come back with him now. We're going to miss everything you've heard today if you know Jesus. All right, we'll deal with that in just a moment. Number 12, it's a terrible catastrophe having to do with demonic appeal and satanic worship. We've dealt with this a little bit in days gone by. Zombie leads horror assault. Now this is only one of 14 scary movies coming out this fall. New moon rising and this has 
has to do with Vampire Bug and the lore of the vampire. That's another one. And then USA Today widespread panic. Eminem enliven zombie gathering. And there they talk about it, the zombies that they're talking about all the time. Are we there, Jack? We're getting ready with these zombies and vampires and werewolves and uh, bloodsuckers, people on TV now, True Blood and all the rest. For Revelation 9, verses 1 to 5, an angel has a key to the bottomless pit and opens it. Now, the bottomless pit is mentioned nine times as the pit of the abyss. It's where all the unclean things were cast. And the angels were cast out of heaven, as you know, in Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, when Lucifer sinned, and he took one-third of those angels with him in Revelation 12, verse 4. They are now the powers of the heavens. And that is, of course, Ephesians 2, 2. Satan is the prince of the power of the air, but they inundate the heavens, and that's why we're fighting against evil spirits in high places. But there are a number of those angels who were cast into the pit of the abyss because they committed a horrible sin with the daughters of men in Genesis 6, 2. Is that hard to believe? No. These filthy, sin-laden creatures call fallen angels are there in that pit of the abyss called Tartarus in the Word of God, and that's only mentioned one time, and as they come out, they begin to spread all of their poison and all of their iniquity and all of their debauchery and all of the lasciviousness on the human race. And that's what's going on right now when you've got 15 million in America and millions more around the world living together without a marriage license. That is part of what they're up to. The Bible says... They're going to be so accepted that the world will worship these demons, Revelation 9, 20. And what's the result? 1 Timothy 4, 1. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to the seducing, damnable spirits who teach doctrines of demons and use some of the preachers today to do it. But there's more. You know, I've already said they're being worshipped by the public these demonic spirits in Revelation 9, 20, but look at the results, verse 21. The people would not repent of their murders, their drug abuses, their fornication, all kinds of lascivious sex acts, and their thefts. It's here, ladies and gentlemen, and that is really going to increase in intensity and immensity right after the church is gone, but it's already starting. Oh, Jack, you know, friends, we don't have to listen to anything except the Word of God. And when we have the Word of God, we won't want to follow what's happening in the world. We we'll want to follow the Lord. Do you want the Lord in your life? He'll give you victory over everything. Jack, would you please pray the prayer of salvation for us? Do you want to escape these 21 judgments? Then pray this prayer. He's coming soon. Lord Jesus, you're the only way we can be saved. You died to keep us from these 21 tragedies. We're going home soon. Lord Jesus, I receive you today as my Savior. Come into my heart now. In your holy name I ask it. Amen. Amen. I trust you prayed that prayer with Jack. There's my address. Write to me this week. I'll send this little book up to you. First Steps in a New Direction. Our author of the week, Showdown with Iran, talking about everything in here that we've been explaining and elaborating on it. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Bob? To order your copy of the Showdown with Iran book with a bonus DVD, the Mideast Crisis, Can Israel Survive? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. 
Oh, thank you, Bob. I do want you to have this in your home. It's so very important because, you know, the threat of war with Iran is growing every single day, and you need to know all the details. It's very, very thorough. You need to have this book. And I got a bonus for you. We're going to be talking about Israel also, as well as uh, the Mideast crisis. Oh, please, make the call or write to us, Showdown with Iran, and my bonus can Israel survive? And now, friends, remember I said, rely on the Word of God. God's Word is a life preserver that keeps the soul from sinking in a sea of troubles. How good. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.